The Liberal government has tabled Bill C-75. This looks at changing the way that our courts work with the goal of getting to more cases faster and perhaps making the process less prone to discrimination. Tanya Walker of Walker Law is back to explain how this bill might change our system. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. All right. It could reduce primarily the use of preliminary inquiries. We talked about some of these earlier in the year. Remind us of how they work and then how they might change if this goes through. Well, a preliminary inquiry is kind of like a hearing to determine the evidence the Crown has, if there's a sufficient evidence to have to proceed with a trial. And they want to eliminate it completely. The only person who would be entitled to a preliminary inquiry a hearing or inquiry is the accused and when the term is life imprisonment. Mm -hmm. So that uh, is, there are over 9,000 preliminary inquiries a year and it's said that it will reduce uh, the preliminary inquiries by 80 to 90 percent. Wow. So what does this do then in terms of cases and getting them through the system faster? Well then you would proceed to trial because you would skip the preliminary inquiry and then you would go to, ahead to trial. The only problem is if you don't have a little bit of a hearing to determine the evidence, the witnesses, all, all that information, it might extend the amount of time for trial. Right. So you get there quicker but it might be longer. Right. All right. The Gerald Stanley trial, which is something everybody in the country watched very closely, it brought up the issue of jury discrimination. Uh, the defense was accused of disqualifying Indigenous candidates during the jury selection, and of course the, uh, the victim in this case was an Indigenous young man. So the bill tries to address some of that. Yes. How, are they, how are they doing that? They want to, they're, um, they're called preemptory challenges. That is the word that is used when you want to eliminate a potential jury member without even speaking to that person. So someone might look at me or you and say, okay, well, I don't want her on my jury. Right. And the problem with that is that it, it may be perceived to be seen as discrimination. Uh, it may not be, but it, that's the way that it would be. And so what they want to do, the liberals want to do is um, eliminate that completely. If a lawyer such as myself wants to eliminate a jury member, potential jury member, then it's the decision is made by the judge. So the judge would ask questions and determine, okay, really, does this person really have an issue? Why the person is not a good So are they member? then asking the lawyers, why do you want to exclude this person? Yes, and okay. the judge makes the inquiry, and then the judge would decide whether or not this person should not be a jury member. How does this all play out? Will it play out you know, when you go to, when you're a juror or you're summoned for jury duty, you go and you sit, and sometimes you're excluded without hearing why? So will that back and forth between judge and lawyer then happen in front of the jury members? Yes. So they, don't, they want the judge to ask questions of the jury member. And maybe the judge might bring the lawyer in chamber say, okay, what is the issue you really have? Right. But it's, it's, it's not um, an automatic, uh, we're not proceeding with this jury member. So the, the, the consequence of this is that um, perhaps the jury pool might be more um, reflective of the town that the trial takes place in. However, it would also probably extend the amount of time it would take to select a jury because instead of getting an automatic 12 to... Uh, 20 challenges to just to say goodbye to the jury member, you have to go through the process. Interesting. Something else that I find really interesting to look at is how this bill is planning to tackle domestic violence cases in court. In particular, right now it puts the onus on offenders to prove that they deserve bail instead of the other way around, of on the Crown to prove that they don't. And it qualifies uh, intimate partner violence as a factor in sentencing and it could possibly lead to harsher Maximum, maximum sentences. So based on what you've seen in your court experience, uh, will it be effective in reducing cases of domestic violence? I don't know if it will be effective in reducing cases because the problem is that not everyone who is involved in domestic violence actually reports it. And the second hurdle is the conviction. So, but it does send a strong message that we as Canadians do not tolerate domestic violence. So uh, the way that it sits right now is that somebody comes forward and says, this is why I need to have these charges laid. Right. And that's the onus on the, the defense. The onus, uh, the onus is on the Crown to prove beyond a reasonable doubt right. that this person should be convicted. So you need evidence. You need, uh, you need um, testimony. Mm -hmm. um, if that person actually went to the hospital, the medical evidence, it's a little bit difficult to gather because not everyone reports domestic violence right away. Right. Uh, C-75 is also heavily on reforming our bail system. So what other steps does it take? It looks at the cost. So um, it, instead of uh, holding someone in jail for, without bail uh, for a petty crime, it, the judge is supposed to evaluate, okay, well, can I uh, achieve the same goal without uh, ta use of taxpayer dollars? Maybe an ankle bracelet uh, calling in to make sure that that person is actually 
uh, hasn't left the city. So that is, and it also takes into account uh, the indigenous uh, factors and also people from marginalized communities when it comes to uh, bail and sentencing. So once that, that background to be taken into consideration, more flexibility, not so stringent, because sometimes the background of a person or um, how the person grew up may influence where they end up in life. It'll be interesting to see uh, Bill 75 as it moves through our system. Tanya, good to have you here to explain it all to us. Thank you for having me.